Welcome to another Access Tutorial. Today what I'd like to do is talk about SQL or Structured Query Language. Now, we've done a lot with querying data using the Query by Example grid where we actually put the tables into the data uh, into the into the upper part of the grid and we put the fields then into the lower part of the grid and we've put in formulas and we've we've played around with what you can do there but behind the hood there is a a struct a query language that actually does the work for us in fact access is taking us a, a step away from actually creating the code the structured query language code that actually does uh, the querying. So what I'd like to do is show you what's going on behind the hood. And so let's look real quick at a query that I have um, that I want to build here. And I'm going to go query build and I'm going to go to query design and I'm going to just close this. So it's totally blank. There's nothing happening here at this point. So I'm going to click on this button up here that puts it in SQL view. Now there are two commands that are minimal in creating a query. The first one is select, and the next one is from where. So let's take it, and we will just right behind this select thing, let select command here, um, what we want to do is we're gonna select full name, and then we're gonna hit enter, and we're, we're gonna put in from, oop, let's spell it right. We're gonna put in from, uh, and there's a table called dim underscore account uh, account managers. Okay, if I run that or view it in table view here, I get a list of full names. So that is the very minimal level of querying that you can do. So let's let's add a little bit to it. Okay, let's go ahead and now if I leave it in what they call design view here, you can see that it put the table up here. It knew that we were doing it from dim account managers. And the only field we put down here was full name. And so when we built it over here, that's all we had. So let's go ahead and add a little bit to it. Before full name here, I'm going to put account manager ID and I'm gonna put a comma space. I'm gonna slip over to the end here and put a comma here and note that it'll be a little bit different. Okay, so I'm gonna put email address there. Now, because it has a space in it, I notate that name of the field by uh, um, putting brackets around it, the square uh, brackets around it. So now I've selected account manager ID, full name, and email address from the table account managers, dim account managers. And let's look at that in that as design view. And we can see that we've now added email address and full name and account manager ID if I open that up, okay? So now we have all of that data. So the next little command that we put in there is, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in SQL view. What happens if we only want um, ones with where last name e equals Winston. Okay, so I'll, I'll go before the semicolon. Now, the semicolon ends the entire block of, of code, okay? So the whole reason for that semicolon is just to say, I'm done. And so I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna put in the next command we need to know and that's where. So select this these fields from this table where this criteria. So here's where we're going to end up putting the criteria in. And I, I've got a field called last name and because it has a space in it, I need to put the brackets around it. And I'm just gonna say equal. And I'm gonna put in quotes because it's a text field and put Winston in there. Okay, now if we, let's, let's see if we can run it and make it run. Okay, there's only one person with last name Winston. So that one is a wonderful way to slim down our data and find out who we have that are last named Winston. So the next thing to do, uh, there's all different ways that you can do use criteria. And we're going to talk about more criteria usages here 
um, as we as we do that next video. But what I want to do now is explain the different kind of joins. What happens if I need to have more than one table there? Okay, so I want to have a table that um, I want to count managers and I want them, but I want maybe their places that they um, that they work. Okay. So let's go ahead and put all access objects here so we can see the tables here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and go over to design view here. And I want to see, um, let's put in territory. Okay, so what territory do each of these account managers manage? Now I'm going to take out my criteria here, this last name criteria. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that while I'm in SQL view here. So now what I've done is I've created what they call an inner join. Okay, now let's dissect this a little bit here. First of all, what, what happens when we have the other tables here is it starts putting the table up here in the select criteria. So dim account managers dot account manager ID. Now we only have account manager ID at this point. We still have our where clause here, okay? Uh, but we're also looking up here at what they call an inner join. So I'm gonna put that on a separate line so we can look at it, okay? So we're gonna take it, those all those fields from dim account managers. We haven't chosen a field from any other uh, any other table yet. So here we have the inner join getting us ready to use other uh, fields from the other tables. And we have the where clause here, okay? So an inner join means that the fields in both of these tables are equal to each other. That's what an inner join is. So you see the equals command here, okay? It gets a little bit more complex when we have a thing called an outer join. So what I want to do is I rely a lot on the access uh, query by example grid to build this. And a lot of times I'll proof this afterwards. So let's go over here. And the best way to view this then is to go into design view. And let's say I want to add this person's territory. So let's go and look at their region and their markets, okay? Now the account manager ID already is over here, so I don't need to duplicate that, okay? But I have one account man uh, ID, and notice it has a many symbol here. We'll talk about that a little bit and, um, as we go forward. Uh, there could be several territories to one account manager. That's why the account manager ID down here is a foreign key. And so that foreign key then allows us to, to query and see how many territories each account manager manages, okay? So what I want to do also, because there could be several markets and regions, let's go ahead and alphabetize. We've got the criteria here. Let's sort the last name ascending, okay? So we get each manager in ascending order. And I'm going to take Winston out of here because I don't want just that one person there. But I do want to leave that in there because this, this uh, criteria that I'm putting on here really is a sort criteria. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a, a look at that. Okay. So we have the West region and their market is Seattle for this top one here. The Stuart Baca. Alda Caden Carden has two cities in the southeast. Now, it's interesting that this is listed twice, and we'll get back to why that occurs. Obviously, it, it's listed in the data twice for some reason, probably has other data points listed with it. And so as we go down, we see Edward Cooley listed three times, but it's all west region in Seattle. Okay, a lot of different data we got a lot of repeats here. So we could either try to discover where the differences are. So let's go ahead. The differences, the difference can't be state. 
because they're all in the same state. So the market would be Seattle and that would be Washington. And uh, so I'm going to move this over again. I'm going to move state on the other side of, of market at the same time, okay? And we can keep playing with that. Now, if I run this again, here we have Stuart here, but we have Alda. Oh, we've got a Charlotte, North Carolina, and a Charlotte, South Carolina. So that's where the two different states are. It's interesting that we somehow have a Seattle in uh, a Seattle in Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. Weird, weird data. So the state was our difference creating the duplicates, but we couldn't see the duplicates because we weren't including, um, we, we weren't seeing the uniqueness because we weren't including state. Okay. So kind of interesting data, but it's just demo data. So we can go forward with that. Okay. So let's look here. What does SQL, the SQL look at, look like now? So we have the select, we have the select statement up here, select account manager ID from account managers. It's going to choose the full name from account managers and the email, email address from account managers. And then it's going to take from territory, the region and market and state. Okay. So it's going to be from DIM account managers interjoined with DIM territory on DIM account manager equals territory account manager ID. Okay. Then you also have the next command to order it by last name. Now, order, the order by command, we'll cover that a little bit more in the next video, but the order by command um, has a specific command that for des descending, uh, but it assumes ascending, uh, order unless you tell it descending. So when you see it in the SQL, you'll just see order by. And when you look at that, you have to understand that that means ascending unless noted otherwise. Okay. Now, what happens if we have an outer join. Okay. So what we want is to look at this data and we want to choose instead and to make this an outer join. So let's go look at the design view here. And what we want to do is change these join properties here to say all territories from account managers and only characters in territory where the join fields are equal. So what we'll have is an arrow pointing this direction. See that arrow right there? And what that means is it's going to show me all account managers. And so this might show me an entire list of account managers, some that don't have territories. So let's see if there are any of those. And if we look here, ah, there's one right there. Doesn't have a territory. And this top one doesn't have a territory. Okay. So an outer join. Now let's look at how the SQL is constructed for an outer join. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I do to this one. The select command and we have the from command. Now the from command is built of this left join on account managers account ID equals account managers manager ID. So the only word that changed was left versus inner so inner join means both of them are equal and it provides the information from both sides of the table only when they're equal. The left join means that this left side table on the left side of the equals, we're going to have all records come from that table and only records where it matches coming from this record, coming from this table. Okay. Now, change one word again. And we have a, um, let's put a, the word, keyword right. So we have a right join. And what this one will do is it'll take all records from territories and only the records from account managers where the territory has an account manager. Okay. So we should see blanks over in the account manager ID side. So when we look at this, if there are any, we would see blanks over here. Okay. 
And if we look at the design view here, notice the arrow goes the opposite direction. Okay, so the easy way to look at this here is that the table on the left side versus the table on the right side. A right outer join means that everything comes from the right side table and only those that match on the left. A right, left outer join means that all tables, all data will come from the left hand side and only the matching ones from the right hand side. So you'll have blanks on the right hand side with a left join. You'll have blanks on the left hand side with a right join. Okay. So that gets you really to the to getting the basics of what's what's going on in SQL. You have select, you have the from table, the the from where it's getting it from, and then you have the where clause saying what criteria is is there. You also have sorted by the ascending here that we covered, and then you also have the ability to have the inner join or outer join in the from command to tell how we're, we're relating the tables that um, are making up our joins. So I hope, hope this has been helpful to you. Hope to see you again later in another video. Thanks. I want to thank you so much for coming and watching this video today. There's a lot of other great content that you can explore on this channel. In fact, a link to one of them is on the other side of the screen here. Also, please take a few moments to subscribe to the channel. It'll keep you informed of new videos as they're posted, and you can keep up with all the great content that's being put out here for everyone to enjoy. We'll hope to see you again later.